Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, which is going to be very important for next week's podcast, we're going to talk about becoming a whole human being, which is sort of a criteria I built for myself. You know, I'm just a regular person. I'm just a YouTuber making content and I'm making content that honestly is about what helped me in my life and is also about what I think will help you in yours, maybe. So I'm going to give you a tool today that especially is important for next week's podcast, where I'm gonna talk about how I live the life that I wanna live every day. Like I just wake up and kind of do whatever I want every day, which was always my dream, right? As a child, you sit there and imagine like, what's a perfect life? Kind of a life where you do whatever you want. I just think I attained it in a way that's specific, especially if you're chronically ill, neurodivergent, or just like don't really fit into the home you were born into or into the world you were born into or into the bubble you were born into. So I think this podcast is going to be very helpful and it's going to be important for next week's. So we're going to talk about my criteria for being a whole human being. Before we jump in, I am drinking a tea today. Actually, my partner got this one for me. It's like a health tea, helps with digest digestion. And it has um, nettle leaf in it, which is, I think you guys know, one of my favorites. It's I think nettle is like the upgraded chamomile. I love chamomile tea, but something about nettle leaf has always been really good to me. It also has small flower, hairy willow herb. Never heard of this. Common nutgrass green and peppermint leaf. Really, really good. And I'm so glad that I get to drink it. So I've got my notes in front of me. So I'll be like referencing that on my monitor here. And I want to talk about my criteria for being a whole human being because I think it is the foundation for living the life that you want. Look, I've always felt like I belong and never belong. And it's a weird kind of life to live where you always feel like you get along with everybody, but you also don't feel like you fully belong, but you kind of belong and people want you a part of the group, but you don't quite feel like you're meant to be there. So in order to figure out where you belong and how to live the life you want every day, you also, I think, have to have a really good relationship with yourself. And I call it being a whole human being. This is criteria that I created for myself when I was gaining weight at a very fast pace because I was eating my feelings, which you guys know I love to eat my feelings. Two, I was very mentally unwell. I had gone through therapy. I had the right tools, but it wasn't quite everything I needed it to be. And I was still working on myself in a lot of ways. Now, of course, by the time I finished GBT and did my year of therapy, by the end of it, things started to really click. And this whole concept of being a whole human being really started to make even more sense to myself. Even though I was working on it and I had ideas, it really, you know, it, it's, no, it's not like you go to therapy and the next day you're like, I got it. It's more like you go to therapy, you read the books, you do ex, you know, you go to the gym and exercise. And after years or months or X amount of time, you see the results. And I saw results because I was gaining tools. So this is a big tool that I created for myself and I gave to myself as a way to keep track and sort of build off that data that we need to understand ourselves. So I'm going to go through the five requirements of being a whole human being with you. And again, I have a very specific person in mind for this because I do think a lot of people live life moving off the script the bubble gives them or moving off a life that their parents give to them or TV tells them to do, which is valid. Everyone has their own way of existing on planet Earth until they eventually die. So I'm not here to criticize that perspective. I'm just here to give you a different tool for those of you who aren't finding the answers in those bubbles. So this one is going to be very much about you and your creation, and you have so much power in this because it's really going to be about your imagination, your willingness to imagine you as a different person, as a more mature person, as a person who's healthier. So here we have the five um, components of being a whole human being, starting off with how is your mental health? Mental health is a very specific thing. It's not just your mental health in terms of schizophrenia or depression or anxiety. It's also Alzheimer's, deterioration, dealing with early onset dementia. It's dealing with the reality that we need our brains to function in order to move through the world. And I think that's a component of genetics, biology, and of course, environment. What we fuel, what we use to fuel our brains is perspective. It um, is the information that moves us through life and it makes a bad day turn into a good day or a good day turn into a bad day because of the relationship we're having with our brains. So when I say, how is your mental health? I am never just talking about 
oh, that thing over there that only happens to certain people and doesn't happen to me because I don't have a diagnosis. Everybody's got a brain and everybody has got to have a healthy relationship with their brain. And so you have to take care of yourself. It's a very physical, intimate relationship you're having with this thing that's sending messages to the rest of everything else to tell it what to do. So make sure you take care of it. So when I say, how is your mental health? I need you to sit down and make that list and ask yourself, how is my mental health? Where is the ideal? Where is the reality? And where's the hope? Okay, so the ideal is kind of like the dream, sort of almost outside of reality, obviously. Where's the reality? So where are you right now? And where's the hope for where you wanna go? Because the hope and the ideal, as much as people wanna think they're the same, they're not. The ideal is outside of almost reality. So it's maybe like unattainable. The hope is where you plan to go in relation to reality. So it's like, um, you ever hear people say, uh, oh, I wanted to be like a, a basketball player, but obviously I'm like 5'10", I can't be. It's one of those things. There's the ideal, I'd like to be a, a basketball player. There's the reality, I'm 5'10". And then there's the hope, well, I'm 5'10", so maybe I can do something more adjacent to neighborhood basketball instead of professional basketball. The idea is to utilize what's in, like what's realistic against what is that ideal. Because I think what humans do is we naturally get trapped in the ideal, which is so fair, we're such dreamers but the ideal isn't gonna get us to reality. The ideal is fun though. I mean, I love experimenting with what ifs. I don't think it's bad to say, oh, I ideally would love this. And then to bring yourself back down to earth as they say, okay, so you've got your mental health. I need you to write down on, just be very honest with yourself because this is for you. This is why you're not supposed to share it with other people. This is supposed to be personal and honest and real. Where are you mentally? Where's your, realistically, where are you mentally? What's your hope and what's the ideal? Now the ideal, I'll use myself as an example, would be something like, I never get triggered again. Where's the reality? Minimal triggers and the hope is to keep it at minimal triggers, if not less. Because I cannot live in a reality where I never get triggered again. That's not realistic, right? Ideal, I never get Alzheimer's. Well, be realistic. I do have a probability of Alzheimer's. It runs in my family. So, okay, I've already got like three relatives who have had it, which means like maybe maybe I'm the next one to get it. Who knows? So realistically, I can't live in a life where ideally I don't get Alzheimer's and I never get triggered. So we have to remember, right, to live within reality. Now, one of the stigmas of the mental health perspective is that when you get Alzheimer's, a lot of people will empathize with you. They'll be like, oh my God, that's so sad. It could happen to any of us. But when you have mental health problems, people think like that couldn't happen to just any of us. That's that's different. That's because of you. That's like, that's dark. That's specific. The reality is anybody could have a mental health problem and anybody could get Alzheimer's and we don't know who's going to get it. We have some ideas. We have some scientific research that's getting us closer to even guessing who might have it with, you know, but we don't, we don't really know. And the same way with mental health, we don't know why things are happening the way they do. It's so much of a construct. So don't let people stigmatize your experience or your desire to get better in terms of mental health, because they themselves are in denial that they could also be susceptible to mental health because everybody has mental health, uh, not problems, but mental, well, actually, Everyone has mental health care that they need to pay attention to, regardless of the spectrum they're on, right? Okay, so physical health. Okay, physical health is also same idea, same concept. Every single one of these I'm gonna give you, same idea, same concept. Physical health is not about fat phobia, okay? So no fat phobia comments in my chat, but the first thing people do when we talk about physical health is how fat are you? This is not the issue. It's not if you're fat, it's why you're fat. It's not if you're anorexic, it's why you're anorexic. It's not, do you have an eating disorder? It's why do you have an eating disorder? Of course it, well, first it's, do you have an eating disorder? And then why do you have an eating disorder? It's about why you have, what relationship you have with your physical body. Are you physically disabled? Are you dealing with mental health problems that are impacting your body? You know, are you sick? You know, all of these things contribute to, again, the reality of where you are with your physical health and you're separating yourself into parts to kind of put it together as a whole human being, right? So what is the relationship you're having with your physical health? Where's the reality of it? What's the ideal? And what's the hope? 
So I'll use myself as an example. Once again, you guys know I have fibromyalgia as of right now. That's what I've been diagnosed with. Who knows if it's going to end up being something else or something specific or who knows what else I might have on top of that, right? I'm always trying to figure it out. I'm always trying to get better. But I noticed even before I did this podcast, I was really like, I was really foggy and my body was in so much pain. And I was telling my partner, man, I don't know. This podcast is going to be really hard to do. And I was like, I'm really running out of options of how to get myself like in my body, like feeling okay because I'm in so much pain today. I took an ibuprofen. I'm like trying to figure out what's wrong with me, you know, other than the fibro. And I was like, you know what? Let me go lift some weights. Maybe working out will help. I went to the living room, lifted some weights, did some squats, you know, did whatever exercises and instantly felt better. And I was like, I got it. I ran down the hallway. I yelled through the, his office door and I said, I feel better. Came into my office, which is where you are now, and pressed record. So even, you know, my body is, is having a physical experience that my consciousness isn't even having. So like my consciousness isn't in pain. My body is. And I have to sit there and be like, why is this, why is this thing that's driving my consciousness in so much pain? What can I do for it? Do I give it teas? Do I give it honey? Do I give it a massage? Do I give it sleep? Like, what does it need so I can get my work done? Because the person that I am sitting here in my body, like she wants to work, but my body is just so fatigued because I'm chronically ill. So what, do, what does it need? For my body, it does seem very prone to um, uh, positive reactions from working out. So it seems very open to physical exercise. Of course, you have to get through that mental fog to lift the weights in the first place, which is what I did all morning. Well, I was getting ready and I was cleaning or moving around or listening to podcasts and trying to figure out how to distract myself or get myself ready. I was moving through that brain fog and I was like, okay, we have to, we have to get this podcast done. We have a stream later tonight. We have so much to do today. We have to, you know, go, go, go. And I said, what's going on with your brain fog? And I'm talking to myself. This idea of being a whole human being is having a relationship with yourself. And this is literally what saved my life, you know, amongst other things through my process of self, you know, harm and ideations and all the other stuff you guys know about my, my come up is I had to figure out all these different parts of me to make them cohesively work together. So I moved through today. I got to the point where once I lifted those weights, it was like I got that like almost hit to the brain. You know, they all work together. My brain was like ding and my, bo and my body was like, oh, we got this. And I was like, great. And then I sat down and I'm recording. And now I'm trying to ride the wave, you know, because who knows when it will crash again. But it's okay. I'll work out again, little workouts here and there, just like a little weightlifting, just like a little bit, get me through the day, right? Because the reality is, is like, I want to be here and I want to have a good life, but I can't listen to the advice from a bunch of people who aren't chronically ill, who aren't neurodivergent, who don't have these struggles, who are sitting here and just saying, push your way through it. I'm not going to be able to push my way through it without the right tools. And with the right tools, you don't push your way through it. You find a way to actually have positive symbiosis. Even though I'm in pain, how do I mitigate that pain to get my work done? I feel less in pain right now than I have all morning just because I lifted some weights for five minutes. It's not about pushing through the pain. It's about how do I make my pain better so it's not in my way as much. Personally, that's how I want to do it. So when I say your physical health, I think of my body as like a boat that I'm traveling on through the oceans, right? A little Luffy, you know, metaphor, if we will. It's like I am, like I am, respecting the fact that my body is a vessel. It has its own issues. It has its own needs. So this whole idea of fat phobia is a distraction from us actually working on our bodies. This whole idea of like, you need to have perfect health. You need to wake up every day at 5 a.m. You just sleep a perfect eight hours. I'm not working in a perfect world. I'm working in a very imperfect one. So how do I get my body what it needs to get me to the next step, right? And that could be aesthetically, but I hope primarily it's health wise. Because if we have a healthy body, we have a healthy mind that moves us into having a relationship with our healthy consciousness, which moves us to our spiritual health. Our spiritual health is our philosophical health, the way we think about ourselves and what we're doing on the planet and in the universe. So lots of people believe in gods, aliens. They think this is the matrix or everyone has an, their own belief. I think we're evolved animals on a planet. I take a very earthy kind of perspective. It's a belief. I don't know this, of course, but my belief is that we're pretty much just a part of the universe in the same way that a 
asteroid is or a waterfall or a tree is, that we are just another organism living within it. What a beautiful experience this is. And look at this thing that we can do with it, right? My spiritual philosophical journey has been long. It will continue to grow. I will continue to change. And I recommend you're open to that. But first and foremost, find a foundational understanding of why you think you're here in a philosophical sense and what you, what that, what you think that means for your life. Because a lot of why we think we're here is what pushes us forward. It's what helps us get jobs, form relationships, decide where to live. So many people decide where to live based off religion, cultural expectations. So do this for yourself. Why do you think you're here? What do you think you're doing here? And the answer should bring you more peace, not less peace. Now, there might be a a point in your journey, which I think happens to many of us, where the realization of a truth might feel life-shattering. Don't let it shatter your life. Just let it let it help you grow to the next step, right? Now, this also coincides with the most impor- important part in my mind because it's the foundation for how humans sort of keep going, which is your survival health. So I'm going to relate this the most to financial health. Finances are how you survive. Maybe I should even rename it survival health, but that's not going to, I need it to translate to your brain. I need it to hit your brain as an understanding that Financial health is how you survive. So I think about my ancestors. I think about the Neanderthals. I think about the fact that human beings, from my own belief system about them, evolved over time and adapted and changed their ways to make it through winters, summers, famines, wars, plagues, that human beings as a species moved forward. And then we built what we call, you know, a barter system. And then we have money. And now we have currencies. And now we have cryptocurrency. And we have all of these tools we've built to move society in a direction, all of these things ultimately represent survival. Basic needs, survival. You have got to know how you're gonna survive in the world. There's not gonna be easy answers for a lot of people. It's not gonna be simple, but at least it's got it make sense and it will make sense once you figure it out. So you guys know I'm a YouTuber. Why am I a YouTuber and why aren't I working in a corporate? Because I am a neurodivergent, chronically ill girly who's too independent and too rough around the edges to be working on teams. So I needed to build a reality in which the way I survived on this planet was through creation, turning my hobby into a job and working seven days a week to maintain this lifestyle. And even though, you know, I'm kind of beating out some statistics here, realistically, I'm making sure I show up to work every day because this is for me a very real, I have a very real understanding that this is how I'm going to survive in the world. I don't have rich parents. I can't live off their salaries. They're going to have to worry about their own retirement. I don't have rich siblings. It's not like I come from generational wealth. No one's going to pay my bills. And so the reality is, is that I, as a solo person, have to figure it out. Now, one of the things that I take pride in might not be your pride, doesn't have to be your pride, but figure out what your pride is is that I am independent, that I know I can survive in the world by myself if I absolutely have to. Thank God I don't have to because I have family and friends and I have a community. But as a very independent person, it's important for Brittany, just me, just my brain, to know that if everything is over, like all my relationships end or there's a war and I get separated, like I will be fine. Now, I will be fine doesn't look the way that it looks now, because if I'm in a survival situation where that's happening, it's about a reliability on the self. I trust myself to be okay. And this is why I say this relationship is about you. It is not about other people. I'm not here to tell you how to have good relationships with other people, at least not in this podcast. I'm preparing you to think about a life where you get to actually be not only happy with your life, but in your joy. Happiness is an emotion. It comes and goes, but I want you to be joyful. So I want you to actually sit here and go, this is my life and I love it. Like if this was my life forever, I'd be happy. But more than that, you'd be content with the reality that life can shift. The world can change. Remember that just because you might be currently sitting in a safe home watching me from the comfort of your reality, There are people around the world who are not having that. They're not having that relationship. Their world is being turned upside down. They are struggling for survival. Their country is being bombed. Like they are not having that relationship. And that might be you. Like the reality is that some of us might have to face a a world war. That some of us might have to face the destruction of our family members. That you do not know what it might be your your turn But what you do have to know is that you'll have the strength and perseverance to get through it 
if it happens or rather when it happens. And so I try to remember that my family came here, right? They immigrated to the United States. Well, I'm in Croatia, as you guys know, but they immigrated to America and they didn't do that because they were having a great time in Iraq. They did that because their life was being turned upside down. They had to escape. They had to come to a better a better world, right? Now I live in Europe because right now this is the better world for me. I would love for America to be that place. And if I was there, I would make it work somehow. It'd be very uncomfortable as many of you know, but that's the thing that kind of happened in my life I couldn't have predicted. How could I have pre predicted that I would have fallen in love with somebody who lived in a different country? I never would have thought I would live in Europe. Like it's, it's a very surreal experience when you grow up in America and you're working under that capitalistic, you know, in that capitalistic bubble and it's so draining and it's so much and healthcare is hard to find as a freelancer and there's no consistency in work and rent just keeps going up more and more because these landlords and not to mention like food bills, everything is overwhelming, right? I couldn't have predicted that I would have married somebody and moved to Europe and my health care would have been accessible and all these things would have been accessible. I couldn't have predicted that. And who knows how long it will last, hopefully a very long time. But it's one of those things where prior to moving here, I was still renting my own place. I was managing, I was hemorrhaging money. You guys know I spent like 15K worth of health care bills during my diagnosis process, right? Outrageous amounts of money just trying to figure out how to get my health back on track. And that is the reality that a lot of us have to face as chronically ill people as we hemorrhage money just to get told, your blood tests are coming back normal. You look totally fine. I think it's fibromyalgia, but who knows? <laughs> like that's the irony of getting my diagnosis is like my rheumatologist is like, could be something else. Right now it looks like fibromyalgia. I'm diagnosing you. And I'm like, okay. He's like, but you never know if there's underlining issues we're not seeing. And that's why we keep doing tests. That's why I'm going in for more tests because there's, you know, there could be the pain still there. I'm still, you know, all of the stuff, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Other people are going to watch this podcast and be like, what is she talking about? Nobody just has pain. What's a chronically ill girly? What is she even saying? You are not living like everybody else, but everybody else isn't living like you and everybody else isn't even living like each other. We all have our unique little categories that we fall into and our struggles are unique to us, right? And so you have to figure out where you land and to end the criteria of the whole human being, the fifth part, know who you are in the story. Know who you are in your anime, your Harry Potter series, which character are you on Euphoria? You have to figure out who are you in the story? Is this the like, is this how you saw your life going? How many times have you been in a situation where you're like, this cannot be the rest of my life, right? That is an opportunity to change your life. This is, I remember distinctly mid twenties, being in an apartment, bad relationship, stressful job, part-time YouTuber, full-time nanny. And I just remember thinking this cannot be the rest of my life, right? And I remember people saying, why it's a good life. Like it's okay. It has bad days, but it has good days. This could be the rest of your life. And I just remember thinking like, Oh, no, 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 no. This cannot be the rest of my life. And the only person responsible for it changing is me. And that's a part of what started and what continued and continues to be a mantra in my life is like, I want to make sure that I'm not waking up every day thinking this cannot be the rest of my life, right? Now I get to wake up every day and think like, this is the, I hope this is the rest of my life. Like, I hope this is my life forever. I would be so lucky to have this be my life forever. It's really, really good. But it was really, really hard to get here. And it all started and ended with the relationship I'm having with myself. Me. Because I'm the only person who goes to sleep with me and wakes up with me every day. And this is true whether you're in a partnership or living with family or you're in a community. My body is mine. My mind is mine. I'm not telling you to have this individual outlook where you individualist outlook where you never consider your community. I'm a very good community member. I pay my taxes. I don't litter. I'm good to my neighbors and I'm nice to like grocery clerks. You know what I mean? I'm a very good community member. But at the end of the day, none of those people have to wake up with my chronic, you know, illness. None of those people have to deal with my mental health. None of those people are going to pay my bills. And none of those people are going to be here to help me work out so I can go to work. My partner can't lift my weights for me. They can cheerlead me. 
They can tell me I'm wonderful today. I probably walked into their office like 10 times today just to be like, I'm in pain. I don't know what to do. What should I do? And, you know, brainstorming with them. But the reality is at the end of the day, I have to be the one to do my squats. I have to be, be the one who comes here and does the pod. I have to be the girl who edits the pod, gets up another video and shows up to stream tonight. I have to be the person who does the thing. And how lucky I am that I have so much control in my life that I get to be the person who does all of those things. So when we talk about being a whole human being, we're looking at you and putting you into the parts that make up you. And all of those parts have subcategories, 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 sub and it's kind of an amazing process that will take lots of time and forever be a process of understanding the self. Like I will always be updating my whole human being, you know, um, self. I'll always be updating my mental health, I'll always be updating my physical health. And who I am in the story is so important. Who do you want to be in your story? Is this your story? And then if you want, if your brain does this, you can think about it from an anime perspective, a genre perspective. Like, do I want to be a drama for the rest of my story? Or do I want to be like a comedy? Do I want to be, you know, what a short film, an animated film? Like, do I want to be like, ask yourself, what's the vibe of your life? You know, when you look at people and you're like, oh, I bet I know what they listen to. Oh, I bet I know who they vote for. Vote for. They're signaling. And you might be wrong, by the way. But you get the idea. This is the same with you. When I look at myself, I think, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then when I discover new things about myself, I'm like, oh, and then I update. You are data. Update, 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 and be honest with yourself. So this is the key that I think is gonna be very difficult for most people. You have to be honest with yourself. <laughs> Easier said than done. Easier said than done. You have to look at your mental health and actually be honest with where you're at. You have to look at your physical health and actually be honest with where you're at. Not in a mean way, not in a cope way, in the kindest, most compassionate, honest way possible. I remember, I, I distinctly remember, and I'm sure many of you have heard the story of when I had gained weight, and I'd been a skinny person all my life, but I gained a lot of weight, and I was in a fat phobic Arab home, of course, as you know. And I distinctly remember just the fat phobia comments, right? And I get it. Like I grew up very fat phobic. Like I fight internalized fat phobia every day. Like I get it. It's hard not to have that image in your head of a person and to judge them and think like, oh, I bet I know what you do. I bet I know you're overeating. And it's all ultimately about us. When we make a judgment of somebody, you know, there's judgment to assess, but then that critical judgment that comes from us right? That insecurity within us. There is a way to look at your life and zone out and be just matter of fact. So let's be as matter of fact with our life. And I remember my father had made a joke. It hurt my feelings. And I remember realizing like, I'm never going to be able to get this weight back to the place I need it to be until I worked on my mental health. So what some of you might do, especially my ADHDers in the audience, is you might look at this list and be like, oh, a list. And then you might be like, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow and I'm going to work on all five of these things and I'm going to do not do that. Do it within reason. So now you have to be realistic about where you are in terms of this list, where you hope to be and what's the ideal. So the ideal is like, I'm going to do it every day. I'm going to work on my mental health, my physical health, my spiritual health. What I learned in my 20s was that I couldn't work on my mental health or I couldn't work on my physical health, sorry, until I worked on my mental health. What I realized for me was that that idea of my philosophical ideas about the world, my spiritual health, was a part of the growing process that was gonna take much longer and was gonna get done sort of in the middle of doing everything else. And then by the end of the road, when I was, you know, where I wanted to be physically, I was really great in my philosophical sense. I was, you know, thriving in terms of my mental health. Like I was in such a good place. I was actually doing pretty good with work. I wasn't as stable as I wanted to be, but I had a direction and I was being realistic with it. Then I got to figure out who I was in the story and what I wanted my story to be. Some people will work on everything at once. Some people will do one at a time. Some people will bounce between the two. Do what makes sense for you. And this is why, again, it's hard because you're probably saying, but I don't even know who I am. Why can't you tell me what you did? Can I just do what you did? You can do what I did, but I am not you and you are not me, even though you are me and I am you. We're all just people trying to live our life and accomplish some goals. And then we cease to exist. And then the cycle continues. You are in a cycle. You have a limited time on earth and you really have so much power to do exactly what you want. But 
it is not easy, even if it is simple. Just like working out is super simple. Go to gym, pick up heavy things, put down heavy things. Not easy. So don't listen to the world who says, it's easy. You should do it. It's so simple. Oh my gosh, you're just being lazy. Laziness is a symptom. And it is not laziness, meaning I'm going to do it with no care in the world. That's called relaxing. And you are allowed to relax. Laziness is a cope. It's a struggle to get up and do what you know needs to get done because something else is going on. Figure out what that something else is. I promise you today, as fabulous as my hair looks and as cute as I am color coordinated today, the struggle was real. And it was physically brought on. It impacted my brain. And then it made me like wonder if I could even do this podcast today. I worked out. It took me so many hours to figure out that I needed to lift weights. I did my nails. I did my hair. I listened to my finance podcasts. I was like, man, I feel like I'm, I, you know, I ate food. I drank my coffee. I watched my Korean cooking show with my partner. I was like, today's a great day, but man, I'm really feeling so much pain. And I finally, ding, I'm going to go lift weights. And you know, I didn't say it like, I'm going to go lift weights. I said it like this. I'm going to go try to lift weights. Maybe this will stop the pain. I went to the living room, put on my podcast, did my weights. And then boom, I felt it like a click in my body, like a literal click. I was feeling so much like a, like a sloth. Like I just wanted to lay in bed and scroll on TikTok. And I was like, this isn't helping. I tried. I sat on the couch. I scrolled on TikTok and I was like, this isn't helping. It's not sparking something. I'm not seeing a video that's giving me an idea. I'm not motivated. I'm not inspired. It's physical. See, I'm using the data to figure out the problem. I tried. I was like, oh, maybe it's mental. Maybe it's this. It was physical. And it was causing brain fog. And then it was causing me to be like disparaged. And I was like, man, okay. Once I lifted those weights, it was like, ding. And then I rushed over here. I'm honestly still sweating underneath this sweater. I rushed over here and I pressed record and here I am. And this will be the rest of my life because realistically, all I can hope for is the consistency and the awareness that I have to check in with myself. Because the ideal, as beautiful as it would be, doesn't exist in this lifetime yet. Maybe science will get there. Maybe we'll have a magic pill. Maybe we'll figure out, you know, all of these things that's going on. But for now... For now, it's good enough. I really think it's good enough if you're willing to problem solve. And the problem solving is the hard part because you are problem solving. Sometimes when we're young, we think the ideal is not having any problems. The ideal is not having any problems. The ideal is knowing how to problem solve. Because life as a default is a problem of survival. That's why I say your financial health should be about your survival health. How are you going to survive in the world? And just a reminder to all my chronically ill, disabled, like humans out here that are genuinely struggling and then decide to have a baby, think about what you're doing to your kid when you're like, hey, I'm barely surviving. Now you get to try. And this is why I say preventative work is key. I'll hear from so many people that say, I'm struggling. You don't understand my situation. You don't understand how hard it is to be me. And then you go and you make a baby. What are you trying to say? Right? I'm struggling. You don't understand. It's so hard. I can't just do it. And then you decide to give up. And you think giving up is who you want to be in the story? Do you want to be the person in the story that gives up? Because that's your choice. And that's the most powerful choice you can have. I made the decision at 30 years old to no longer be the person that was going to give up and to be the person that would win the game she was playing. And not only did I win the game I was playing, but it's a never ending game. And that acceptance is what's the hardest, the, the hardest part. It is a never ending game. You don't solve it once. You don't win the game once and it's over. You do it again and you do it better and you do it again and you do it better and you do it again and you do it better and you were consistent. I would love to give everyone a life where they had no problems, but that just means not existing. And I just don't think that's the answer. Especially if you're here already, that's not the answer. 
I used to think that was the answer, right? That's why I wanted to unalive. If I unalived, I'd have no problems. True. But that's not much of a solution. It is a solution. But it's not much of a solution. Just like sitting at home and making a baby in hopes that it will keep your relationship together, it's not much of a solution. Just kind of more of a problem. So when I say know who you are in the story, know your story, you have to make this decision. That's why on stream, we watch people and their lives and how they choose to live their lives. Do you want to be the mom on Caleb Hammer who has five kids from three different baby daddies and can't manage her life? Like, do you want that to be your story? Because that's what it is at the end of the day. You have to decide, oh, am I going to be that person? Do I want to be this person? Who do I want to be in the story? And then you have to go and be the right person in the story that coincides with your joy. You're not obligated to it. There's no guarantee you'll accomplish, you know, your ideal. Probably you won't accomplish it. But what you can accomplish is your joy, knowing who you are in the story, getting together with your physical, mental, and financial health. And you can avoid being the mom with three baby daddies from, you know, or five baby, five babies from three baby daddies. Like you can avoid that. And even if you are her, it's not the end of the world. It's just a different game. And she has to learn to play that game so she can change her story. From the woman who had five kids with three baby daddies to the woman who, you know, uplifted her family out of poverty, figured it out, got her kids a basic education and helped those kids not have to live a life where they too feel like they are under the burden of unsolvable problems. Your problems are not unsolvable. But the only person who can solve them is you. So when I say like know who you are in the story, you are the main character. Even if, I always joke, I'm not the main character in the anime, but I am the main character in my story. I always feel like the side characters have a better life. <laughs> the main character doesn't get to live for themselves. The protagonist in an anime is obligated usually to save the planet over and over again. I don't want to save the planet. I'll help. But I'd rather do my own thing. Still the main character in my life, but maybe not the main character in everybody else's. I think a lot of people dream about being the main character in everybody else's life because they think that's the best position to be in. I don't think so. I'm not convinced. I think it is better to be the main character in your own life and the side characters in everybody else's. You have freedom and a little bit of responsibility, good standing in the hierarchy, but also you get to do really what you want. Now that we've gone over some of my thoughts about being a whole human being, this is gonna be the foundation for getting us to next week's podcast, which is going to be about why do I live my life the way that I do and how did I accomplish living the life that I actually want to live every day? Of course, it's not really about me. I'm just saying that I did it, so like you can do it too, but also you're not gonna do it the same way I did it, which is why you have to figure this part of your life out because you can't do what Brittany did. All these like finance people, and I listen to so many finance people, and I listen to so many like, oh, this is how you should do it, and I did it this way, so you should do it just like me. If I've learned anything from listening to other people talk about their successes is that you can't do it like they did because if I listened to those people and I tried to do what they were doing with my chronic health issues, I would burn out and fail every time like I did before because I can't do it like them. We're not dealing with the same struggles. So you can't look at me and think, I'll do it the way Brittany did. What you can do though is go, okay, this worked for Brittany as a model. How do I incorporate this tool into my life to work for me? So I want you to go home or do what you're gonna do, wherever you're gonna do it, a cafe or whatever. And I want you to sit down, okay, I will take this you know, questionnaire, I'll put it on Patreon, uh, I'll make it a public post so you guys can see it. Though I do recommend becoming a free member and following me on Patreon just in case, you know, any reason, you know, I got to take a break from YouTube or you can't see me or you just want to, you know, be updated. I will post on Patreon. You can follow there for free. Follow me for free on Patreon. Okay. I will post this there and I want you to take it. I want you to incorporate it into your life. Answer the questions and update it every six to 12 months until you start to understand how to use this tool for yourself. The idea behind all of this is that it is simply one of the many tools that worked for me. And it is the foundation to getting us to that next step of what now? Okay, I figured out who I am. What now? Exactly. What now? Anything you want within reason. Within reason. 
and with the ideal in mind, but within reason. Okay, so follow me on Patreon for free. I'll go ahead and post this there. You guys can check it out. If you guys become a Patreon member, I do appreciate it. It does help fund the content. But more than that, if you could just like the video and leave a comment down in the comment sections down below, that, that would be great. YouTube really, really likes it when you like and you comment. And that would helps me out a lot as a content creator. Otherwise, thank you for being here. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment sections down below. And I will see you next podcast. Excited for the next one. I've actually been wanting to make it for a long time. I just didn't know how to do it. And I think it's because I needed to make this one first. So I'm excited to talk to you about it next week. And if you have any ideas for future podcasts, let me know because I do decide what podcasts to do based off of your requests. I want to give you the content you need or want to listen to or because that's what I do when I listen to content creators. I'm like, what do I need? And then I find a podcast that gives me what I need and I want to be that podcast for you. So please Leave your comments down in the sections down below. Down below? God, I said that so many times. Now I'm like, did I talk weird? Comment sections, comment down below. Comments. All right, bye. In my head, in real life, I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I sense I've been nothing but blessed so why's my life a mess please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking yeah I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool